talk about hope in adversity. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together to welcome Ms. Anliba Pass. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim and assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much, Evo Talk. Thank you very much, my August gathering, for giving me this opportunity to be sharing a few thoughts with you. First of all, I'm a reluctant politician. I never wanted to be a politician. Nobody in my family has ever been a politician. And most of my family is still aghast at what I do, especially when they see me on a talk show. So today, when uh, Harun asked me to share some things, and I thought about what I should share with you, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that I have learned, benefited from, and I think you must have learned also. And you can share, we can share this and spread the message of hope forward. So I'll be talking about some rules of my life that worked for me and I've seen working for other people as well. Rule number one, life is a game and life is a mind game. Everywhere, every stage, every moment. And that's the hope. Because most of us, if we examine how we spend our day and our life, are approaching life through outside in. You know, if we sit down and start writing what has gone on during the day, we'll be talking about this didn't happen because this law changed. This didn't happen because this boss of mine, he refused to listen to my idea. This didn't happen because my wife doesn't understand that I have to work this long hour. This didn't happen because children are so selfish these days. This is our normal talk during the day, during the month, during the year, during the life. Outside in. And that is 90% of the game. Because if you're outside in, there is very little chance of something bright and hopeful happening in your life because you are dependent on things which you cannot control. So the rule number one says, be inside out. Because as they say, and you must have heard that research also, Carol Duke's research where he talks about uh, a mindset which is fixated mindset, and you have a mindset which is a growth mindset. And the difference between the growth and the fixated mindset, and that, by the way, is after he scanned 83,000 brains all over the world. It's a study where he has scanned 83,000 brains all over the world. And he's come to this conclusion. So the good news is that yes, you can shift from one mind to the other. And that's where 90% of success lies. Right? So in your offices when you're sitting, and there is one person, one person working with us who comes in and he says, you know, there's no point in working over here on my presentation. The board is not going to be even giving hoots to what I'm saying. And there'll be another person in front of that board coming in and saying, I'm going to make a presentation they cannot refuse. He's not dependent on the board to change. He's not dependent on the board to become nice and receptive. He's not dependent that whether they are going to be looking at him favorably or unfavorably. He's dependent on himself, his brains, his skills, his ability to adapt, adopt such ways which are irresistible. 
so that's where the inside out outside in and this is what i have seen and uh, obviously more so in this my present profession where nearly everybody in everything is saying it can't happen so it's the inside out the 90 10 rule if you must have read across it's all over the net that 90% is what 10% is what happens to you and 90% is your response to what happens to you right so the saying goes we are not hurt but by what others do to us we are not hurt by what others do to us we are hurt by what we do in response to what others do to us and that's the that's the fundamental in all my life which i had really used to i mean my good times when i was doing good things and i used to come across people i found a clear difference and those who were going up and those who were not going up was this this is one fundamental rule if we adopt life changes and you know that uh, example also very simple example you start the day and uh, you know you have got to you got to go to the office and you got your 6 year old to be dropped at school you come out in a hurry wearing your shirt and your tie and then your uh, daughter or your son sitting over there there's a cup of tea or coffee in front of you and you're in a hurry and you say chalo chalo main tumhe school chhod ke aata hu and she's sulky or whatever hits the cup of coffee it goes all on your shirt now that's the moment of choice of how you respond and that moment of choice of response will change your whole day your profession your life because you look at your shirt you look at your time and you say oh my god ye kya kar diya ye main pehle bhi kaha tha ki chai piche rakha karo you start hollering at your wife or whatever and the kid starts crying and then the wife has to drag the kid and you go upstairs try to change your shirt the kid is by that time crying she doesn't want to sit in the car she's afraid of you and another 20 minutes go by you sit in the car you late traffic is up you reach late to her school she's not allowed in you have to go in the office tell him that you know please accept her she's late you reach the office you're late for with 35 minutes in the meeting everybody stares at you and when you start presenting you nervous and you say all the wrong things you come out and you say my boss is this my th- day is this you know my wife doesn't understand this that your juniors are sitting in front of you and you give it to them they in turn say okay fine by the end of the day it's a conflict between you and they getting things done you come back home you're upset you sit down you don't even talk to the family and there is this division in the house just because of that and you blaming the wife the traffic the government the system the drivers the school the principal the child everybody all you had to do was in that moment when it was there you say dhyan se go up change pick her up or pick him up and that's it so the inside out approach it's all the brain power over here you know the mindset as i call them and you know when i talk about these things a lot of people and i'm sure you're going to ask me this also come back to me and say aap itni brain power mindset ki baat karti hain to zara jo aapke sath parliament mein baithe hote hain zara unko bhi ye bataye तो मैं आगे से कहती हूँ भाई उसकी शर्त है कि आपका माइंड होना चाहिए ब्रेन होना चाहिए होगा तो कुछ करूंगी सो रूल नंबर टू 
always try to see the beautiful in the awful. Always try to see the beautiful in the awful. When things are really tough, dark, dingy, stressful, everybody's like at a loss. Even the most ugliest of moments have an element of beauty and it's your eye, it's your mind's eye, it's your vision. What is vision? The ability to see what others can't see. So that's how it is. And that's where I will uh, quote an example which is very recent and you may be able to understand it. Corona happened, COVID came in, March 2020, lockdown happened, we were sitting in a meeting and absolutely at a loss. I am the foreign affairs person, foreign affairs policy. We are deciding that the Wuhan students who are locked over there and who are sending videos and their parents are cursing us, get our children back ASAP. India has got their children back, US has got their children back, every country is sending you know, flights, get, get the children back. The opposition is clamoring, the media is bashing, videos are coming, huge pressure. And of course, the pressure to lock down. And it's really bad. And then, amidst that, a decision is made not to get them back which was the most unpopular decision possible. What came in my mobile, you cannot imagine. Murderer, uh, insensitive killer, uh, we are going to shoot your children, we are going to make sure that your children are suffering from corona and you know, what not. And of course, lockdown decision where we said we are not going to have a complete lockdown. Nowhere in the world, I, I think if there are seven billion people, seven billion people were saying they are mad. And I think those two decisions where we sat down and there were two basic discussions we were having in foreign affairs, policy or decision, what to do about the students, whether to get them back or not, because all the countries finally what happened, the decision was very simple. And the decision was that nobody in the world at the moment knows what corona is. We don't even know how to test them. The safest place for them is China. Because they know what it is happening more than anybody else. But nobody was even allowing us to utter a word on it. So those decisions in that ugly, extremely difficult moment actually thinking about the safety of the students and the poverty of the people who will go out of jobs. Day before yesterday, Pakistan was ranked by The Economist in the top three countries on normalcy index in the world. New Zealand was number one, Hong Kong was number two, and Pakistan was number three. And it seems very simple to you, but it was very difficult. It was very difficult. Even our own party members were against us. Everybody was against us. Okay, so see the beautiful in the awful. Number three, always have the audacity of embracing abnormality. Always the audacity embracing abnormality. You know, when you want, then there's so much pressure on you of every sort. You have to do things which are out of box. And you have to go against the norms because norms are going to let you do what you do. 
and what you do doesn't work in these circumstances. So a lot of times, and you know, I would just uh, relate to you, I'll come back to my own story a little later, uh, because when I was born, in the labor room, they told my khala who was there that she's abnormal. Later, it, it did, turned out it was not that bad, but I think I was listening to it, so I decided that I'm going to be abnormal. And everything in my life that I've done has not been living by the norms stuff. But we all have kids. So my daughter, she went to study and she did her strategy and marketing from Warwick and she came back. And uh, she went into the corporate world and you know how millennials are, how our kids are? So then she came back, she said, corporate world is not for me. So I said, what is it for you? And then, you know, those lectures started by her father, by everybody, look, your degree, your, we've spent so much money, this, that, let me know. So one day I just sat with her and I said, okay, what is that you want to do, you love to do, and you never get tired of it? And she said, watching cricket. So the whole family was aghast because girls can't talk cricket. That's not the norm. They are made fun of. They are just cheerleaders in cricket. They are just this in cricket. It's a technical game. It's a man's world. It's a boy's profession. So I asked her, I said, well, look, uh, uh, so if you're interested, then you know, start reading on it. She, she reads on it. I said, start writing a blog or something, you know, let's start from there. And about seven years ago, there was this uh, World Cup starting somewhere, I think in Australia or somewhere. And there was an ad in the newspapers asking for analysts. So I asked her, I said, why don't you apply? And she was saying, as an analyst, no way. So I said, let's try. She went over there. She came back, she was crying, and she said that, you know, I will never get it. I said, why? She said, though, the men were sitting over there, and when I went there for the interview, they looked at me like this, and they said, it's a job for a cricket analyst. Do you know that? And she said, I said, yes, I know that. And then the other guy who was sitting, he had a smirk on his face, and he said, acha, reverse swing kya hoti? So I said, Fine, then what did you reply? She told me. I said, that's a perfectly good reply. Why shouldn't you get it? And lo and behold, she did. She got the job as a cricket analyst. And of course, there's a long story of what happened and you know how difficult it was for her to make a name for herself. And she was considered abnormal because girls don't talk cricket. Girls can't make out left from right in cricket. They can talk cricket in the general sense, but they can't talk cricket in the deeper sense. But yesterday when I saw her sitting as an analyst in Cardiff with Nasir Hussain, and uh, the English commentators, that was a moment for pride, that now the abnormal is normal. So you have to make the abnormal normal. You can't just do what you do and expect a different result. So that's basically the third rule. And the fourth rule is, don't focus on everyone, focus on one. Don't focus on everyone. The whole world is going to be against you. All the circumstances are going to be against you. Everybody is going to be talking against you. And if you start thinking, what have I done? 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 What have I Don't. You know, even when you're trying to teach people to stop in front of the red light, and I've seen that. रात के दो बजे में रेड लाइट है बाकी सारे इधर उधर से जा रहे हैं कोई टुल्ला नहीं है कुछ नहीं है रेड लाइट है आप खड़ी कर लेते वो पीछे से हॉर्न आते हैं आपको 
कि क्या पागल है रुका हुआ है रुकी हुई है एंड यू नो सम गोइंग लाइक दिस सम गोइंग लाइक दैट एंड यू दी ओनली वन और वो रेड लाइट जो होती वो ग्रीन हो ही नहीं रही होती एंड यू स्टार्ट थिंकिंग शायद खराब है एंड आप अकेले वहाँ खड़े हैं एंड पीपल आर स्टेयरिंग एट यू गोइंग लेफ्ट राइट एंड देन वन कार कम्स एंड स्टॉप्स बिहाइंड यू यू लेड आपने चेंज आप ले आए आपने एक बंदे को चेंज कर दिया वेन यू चेंज एन इंफ्लुएंस एन इंस्पायर वन यू इंस्पायर मैनी सो डोंट बॉदर जस्ट फोकस फोकस ऑन एवरी वन फोकस ऑन वन द फिफ्थ रूल ग्रेट will out do intelligence and talent any time talent is overrated intelligence is overrated grit and it's a very difficult word to describe and sometimes i look at g r i t and i think of it and i say g is for guts r is for resilience i is for initiative and t is for tenacity the ability to hang on against all odds the ability to keep at it when nobody is at it so i remember when i first of all wrote to franklin covey usa that i wanted to bring franklin covey into pakistan they didn't bother to reply me i think it was 2006 or sometime and they thought you know because the one came under south asia and you know typical american remote they don't even know how it's like so all the images given by india in south asia that they were like i don't know what happens over there so why should we enter that market by any way after writing for about one and a half years writing literally every day every day for one and a half years they gave me a test and the test was that okay steven kavi is coming in um, india mumbai delhi and you know you bring in the video link he's not going to come into pakistan it's not safe and uh, you if your market is that interested in knowledge and they are learned people in it so try that and at that time video links were damned expensive and very difficult so we were getting it from delhi but somehow by doing all that we managed it i was talking to delhi and then george bush or was coming to pakistan and india and all satellites were cut because of security this is 6 days before that so indian said said it's off but i didn't agree to that i worked out people like you it people we said okay we will take it from the next day colombo and we'll do it through dubai the technology so we reset it two days before that happened it was happening in marriott the us consulate the bomb blast happened and again the indians uh, and the it's off i said failure is not an option this cannot happen so what we did was that on the other side was us consulate i remember and the, on the other side of marriott we built up the whole thing and we worked through the night and it happened and that is how unbelievable it still goes into the whole case study of how franklin cave kavi came into pakistan it was a case study over there as well so that's basically it grit nothing else it was not technology it was not resources it was not science it was not uh, you know anything out of the world it was simply grit have the guts to take the risk take an initiative have the resilience to bear the pressure that the indians want you to fail and have the tenacity to hang on to it okay so then we go on to the the rule that we have and the final rule is go beyond rise beyond the purpose of the self 
When you rise beyond the self, you become immune to darkness and adversity. When you rise beyond the presence, every human being has a desire to rise higher than themselves. Every human being, I've seen that. So when you have a higher purpose, you lift yourself up. And you people are familiar with this. And I've seen this with the smallest of people and the highest of people as well, that the most complaints that I receive from people is that, you know, our life is so around Monday and so routine, uh, you know, kolu ke bel ki tarah kaam karte hai, kun pasina karte hai, milta kuch bhi nahi hai. Yeah, we're complaining all the time because the life is so routine, so transactional, so mundane, so boring. But when you lift yourself up for a higher purpose, then the spirit and the body lifts. And I always say that the best way to forget about your worries is by going beyond them. That's the best way to resolve yourself. And I've tried it with, uh, you know, smaller people also because we treat them as nothing. So my driver, when I ask him to come early, Zahoor, saadhe paanj baje aana hai, hamne jaldi nikalna hai, badi lambi drive hai, koat ki jana hai. So sometimes he comes at 5.30, sometimes he comes at uh, 6.00, sometimes he comes at 6.30, oh ji, bich pe, oh, na ka a gaya, ye ho gaya, wo ho gaya, he has some complaint, sector, sector. So one day I thought about it, that that's what I'm saying to others, that you lift yourself and how I'm treating him as just a transactional person. So one day I said, ke zahur, suba saadhe paanj pe jana, aur tumhe pata hai na, कि वहाँ होना क्या है वहाँ ये होना है हम अगर लेट पहुँचे ना वो सारा इंतज़ाम वैसे ही रह जाना है टीवी ने भी वही दिखाना है और पूरे का पूरा ये एक प्रोपागेंडा चलना शुरू हो जाना है तुम ही हो बताओ मुझे कैसे चलना है द मिनट फ्रॉम अ टेलिंग मोड टू अ लिफ्टिंग मोड एंड एन कंसल्टेटिव मोड आई गो इन टू हिम ही गिव्स मी अ होल नेविगेशन नहीं बाजी वो जी टी रोड नहीं चलते इससे चलते हैं उससे चलते हैं उससे चलते हैं ही बिकम्स द मास्ट ऑफ इज ओन सेरेमनी ही इज वर्किंग फॉर अ हायर कॉज ही इज नॉट वर्किंग एज अ ड्राइवर फॉर मी ही इज कॉन्ट्रीब्यूटिंग टू समथिंग हायर देन हिमसेल्फ एंड इन द मॉर्निंग वेन आई कम डाउन एट फाइव थर्टी आई सी हिम कैरिंग अ मास्क वो थर्मस होती है उसमें चाय भी होती है एंड ही वुड लाफ एट मी एंड से कि जी वो बाजी मैं चाय भी बना लेती तुझी तो रुकना नहीं एंड देर वी गो सो फ्रॉम दिस टू अ पर्सन दैट्स हाउ आई डिसाइडेड वेन आई वॉज एट द पीक ऑफ माई करियर आई वॉज वर्किंग फॉर द वर्ल्ड बैंक आई वॉज द सी ओ ऑफ फ्रेंकलिन कवि my daughter was going for, for studies in the foreign world and at that time when i saw her going i said i had this you know parents have this feeling of emptiness when first time your child leaves the house and i had this feeling that she may not come back she why should she come back she's you know i've been telling her this she says they're bomb you know she's just seen bomb blasts and load shedding and this and that and अब जाएगी वहाँ मास्टर्स करेगी जॉब करेगी शादी करेगी फिर तब वापस आएगी जब मैं इसको ब्लैक मेल करूँगी कि देख तेरी माँ मर रही आ जा सो यू नो दैट्स वॉट वो थिंग वॉज गोइंग ऑन इन माई माइंड एंड दैट्स द टाइम वेन आई सेड वॉट विल हैपन आई हैव फाइव मोर वर्ल्ड बैंक प्रोजेक्ट्स विल दैट गिव मी सेटिसफैक्शन और नॉट नो दिस इज द टाइम फॉर द चिल्ड्रन नॉट जस्ट माई एंड फॉर द चिल्ड्रन ऑफ दिस कंट्री people like us don't go into this dirt because we are clean and we our children are okay and you know we are well settled and we come into these air conditioned rooms and we give nice talks and we are very comfortable with our lives and we love talking about why it will never happen over there but it doesn't happen over there because people like us don't want to go over there because it's tough and dirty that is the time when i left everything and i joined politics and it has been tough and i must admit that there are nights when i lie down and i ask myself ye maine kya kiya but at the end i remember one person 
who said something to me which has made her or his life. So hope in adversity is always like that. You know, every adversity is a disguised opportunity. Remember that. When people come to me and they say, Ke ji, itte bure halat hai, ye hai, wo hai. Hum kaise leader bane? Hamare paas to paise nahi hai, ye nahi hai, wo nahi. So I tell them, Ke practically dekh le, every leader came from nothing. ना जॉब्स थी ना कुछ था सारी हिस्ट्री उठा के देख ले स्टीव जॉब्स को देना ही जी वो अमेरिका में होता है मैं उनको कहती हूँ स्टीव जॉब्स को देख लो इलेजिटमेट इलिटरेट कैंसर सो इन एवरी एडवर्सिटी देर इज एन अपॉर्चुनिटी सो आई जस्ट एंड बाय कोटिंग माय फेवरेट मार्टिन लूथर किंग ही सेड in every darkness because there is darkness you see the stars thank you